This is the first video of six covering the demand and supply model. And first, we're just going to talk about the basics of the model itself. We're going to go ahead and think about analyzing competitive markets. By competitive markets, we mean there are many buyers and many sellers who are what we call price takers. They take the market price as given, and each buyer and each seller is too small to exert significant influence on the overall market price. Ideally, we're also talking about what's sometimes called a homogeneous commodity or a situation where there is little product differentiation. If sellers each offer a different variety of the product and those are really important differences, then it isn't really appropriate to consider all the sellers in one market. The demand and supply model isn't a very good fit for situations where we have markets with just two or three or four firms, or markets where product differentiation is really important. And if you take the microeconomics course, you'll learn about how we analyze those sorts of markets. So there's a review question for you to see if that made sense. And we're going to go ahead and go on and start talking about demand. So there are three concepts on this slide here. We talk about the quantity demanded is the amount of a good that buyers are willing and able to purchase under current market conditions. And current market conditions would include the price of the good, their income levels, the price of related goods, their expectations about future prices, and all sorts of other things. Notice that I've put willing and able in some italics here to emphasize it. And that's because we're talking about the idea of effective demand. Someone may demand a pony, but unless they're willing and able to pay for it, their demand isn't really important or effective. So that's what we're really interested in. Then the second idea we have in this slide is what's called the law of demand. So the law of demand is the assertion that all else equal, when the price of a good rises, quantity demanded falls. And we often illustrate or depict this information in what's called a demand schedule, which is a table depicting the relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded of that good. Then we often use the data from the demand schedule to build a demand curve. And a demand curve is a graph of the relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded. Now this gets a little bit tricky. Ordinarily, when you graph something, you put the independent variable on the horizontal axis and the dependent variable on the vertical axis. But because essentially of some historical traditions, we do it the other way around. We're going to put price on the vertical axis, even though we think it's price that determines quantity and not quantity that determines price. And that's just, we're stuck with that. And that's all there is to it. So on the left-hand side of this slide, we have the information from the demand schedule. And then on the right-hand side, you can see that we've graphed that information to make a demand curve. And that's just the basic idea. The demand curve depicts how much quantity is demanded at every price. At a price of $2, we have four quantity demanded, just like in the demand schedule. At a price of $1, we have eight quantity demanded. So the downward slope of the demand curve doesn't depict something that happens over time. Students commonly sort of think about it that way, so that they say that, well, if something has a growing demand over time, I'm going to go ahead and have the demand curve slope up. But no, remember that prices on this axis and quantity demanded is on that axis. So when we draw this downward slope, we're showing that there's an inverse or negative relationship between these two variables, that high prices 
are associated with a low quantity demanded and low prices are associated with a high quantity demanded. The shape of that demand curve tells us everything we need to know about the relationship between the price of the good and the quantity demanded of the good. So if the price of the good changes, all we have to do is find the new quantity, to find the new quantity demanded is to look where that price hits the demand curve. And later on, we'll refer to this as a movement along a fixed demand curve that is induced or caused by a change in the price of the good. There are a couple of review questions on this slide that I'll let you guys handle. And remember, you can pause the video. Another review question on this slide. And that's the end of our first segment.